in your evening. Um, we have with us tonight Rob Robinson with UDA, um, and he has been working diligently to study the West End and to come up with a uh, plan uh, that we can all embrace and move forward with. And so tonight, uh, he and his team would like to present uh, what they have learned from our community so far and some initial thoughts and responses. So thank you, Rob, for being here, and we will turn it over and let you get started. Super. Well, thank you very much, Jay. Um, we're we're going to go through a couple of um, different segments tonight uh, to get feedback. We're in a really early stage here of starting to understand the West End, understand what's happening um, all around you as well. And we're really looking for your feedback tonight. So this will break into kind of two uh, pieces, an A and a B. The A will be a little bit of our research, uh, what we've been looking at, what we've been noticing as uh, patterns are emerging and other patterns are going away. And um, uh, that sort of helps us understand some of the uh, uh, physical changes that are taking place within the West End and within downtown for sure. And then the second part of that, we'll, we'll click on another, ask you to click on another link which takes you to uh, a website where it's sort of like a virtual post-it board. You can um, uh, add comments and we can um, have a little bit of discussion about what you're seeing and what you're, what you're thinking about as well. So it'll, it'll help us uh, enormously. So let me just share um, the, uh, my screen and a little bit of the uh, presentation first part of the presentation as we go through this. So we're in our early phases. Um, we've been uh, documenting what's what's happening there, a lot of the land management tools, the zoning ordinances, what's being um, uh, what's being submitted into the city, what what is the planning staff looking at all the time, what are what is the development community bringing to the table and um, uh, how those patterns are affecting uh, really the entire district. So we're we're early in that, and this is where we want some of your input about your your sense of whether uh, the West End is sort of moving in the right direction and what things can be improved. One of the reasons we do small area plans, and this really came out of the ma downtown master plan is that we've, we've got a lot of land management tools and a, a lot of folks who are dedicated to um, looking at development proposals and crafting the uh, different ordinance uh, ordinances that guide development and reviewing. You've got design review boards to look at um, uh, buildings and proposed projects that are coming in, design guidelines of different sorts. but what we're finding is that as development really accelerates and there's a lot of change from uh, over the over the decades from what is is coming into cities now how greenville is working now versus that was working in the 1950s or 1960s or 1970s 80s or 90s you know you're, you you guys are in the midst of lots of change what are we trying to do here you know, what is the West End becoming? What does it want to be when it grows up? You know, and without that kind of common vision, as we start to see the uh, place emerging, it's really hard uh, to tell uh, folks who may want to develop or redevelop a property in the West End, you know, what the big vision is so that we can aim um, those efforts to be more in sync with what you as citizens and business owners and um, uh, city leadership want to see happen. And it's not the same everywhere. We, we understand that. And uh, so we, we just want to get our arms around where is the, you know, where are things appropriate and what's the scale and character? What does it want to be? And how do these streets want to live? And how do the public spaces want to live? And how do you want to get around in there? So we're we're in this very early stage of trying to get some input, and then we'll come back uh, in April, at the end of April, and uh, try out some ideas with you and get your response. Are we are we getting close? 
are we way off the mark? Are there things that we're missing? Are there things that could be better? Are there things that uh, uh, you'd like to see that you you're not seeing in there? So we'll we'll test those and then we'll spend um, uh, June refining those and uh, uh, really May and June re refining those and then coming back in for a public meeting and a planning commission review of recommendations for uh, the plan. So we're here tonight um, for the very first one of these, and um, I, I wanted to uh, uh, talk a little bit about South Downtown because we we had uh, completed a draft plan, small area plan for South Downtown, and the objectives I think were very much the same. They don't really change from district to district, but they're different, right? Because West End is different than what's downtown, it's different than what's in South downtown where County Square is being uh, developed now. So we want to find the the sort of DNA, if you will, for uh, the West End. So we've got lots of different initiatives that are coming in every week, it seems almost every day uh, within the study study area. And we're, we want to be able to tie those together to have a thread um, as this moves forward to make a coherent vision for the West End as a district as a whole. And then we'd like to see if there are character areas, uh, little precincts within the West End that create a basis for updating the zoning and the design standards so that we're better uh, uh, equipped and it's more faceted to be able to respond to local conditions. Very different in the East End of the West End, <laughs> If that's such a thing, then the West End of the West End, and uh, so th that'll that'll be the focus a little bit for the next month or so, and then this connectivity between neighborhoods. How's it working? Unity Park is happening to your to the north of you. Some streets connect. How do you get across as a pedestrian? How about to to the south of you? Uh, same kinds of issues. What are uh, those kind of points of connectivity that could be improved? And then thinking just about the what, what we call shared addresses, fronting city streets and parks. These are really our great public spaces. We forget about streets as the place we all live uh, versus a place that just handles traffic and cars. So if we don't have good streets, it's really tough to have a good neighborhood. So thinking about that, what's missing, it might be working just fine. Um, and, and in many cases, it looks like it is, but there's always thoughts about how you tweak it in different uh, different areas of the of the district and then they're always balancing this, the differences of scale between building types and you're in a, a mixed use downtown neighborhood downtown precinct in a way that gets lots of different building types often side by side so it makes it really interesting uh, but it can also be uh, uh, you know somewhat shocking too if you're not if you haven't really visualized it and been able to uh, understand what are some of the great uh, little techniques you can use to mitigate that. And a lot of your design guidelines have those, have many of those criteria. The idea of get about getting a little more specific with them was something that we've uh, discussed in detail with the uh, planning staff. So when we, when we start to look at cities and precincts like this as urban designers, we always want to understand what are the patterns uh, of these of these places, and they we so we do what we call a little series of X-rays where we start to pull apart uh, these different components that that are, are are certainly physical components that make places what they are, and so you can start to understand both the use. This little map is colored by uses where. Uh, residential is in yellow and orange and office uses are in blue and commercial retail uses are in are in red and, and you'll see the purple which are typically institutions or civic uses of one sort or another churches and high schools and the stadium we have uh, uh, looked at as a kind of civic use here in the middle so you really do have a kind of uh, gumbo here which is usually pretty marvelous but it also creates you know, a lot of uncertainty about what may happen where and is it appropriate in that particular context. When you look purely at the zoning, it doesn't tell you so much about character. Um, 
and and what a, a whole district is trying to become tells you more about what's permitted, um, different kinds of building heights and types and setbacks and and all the, those kind of detailed relationships, but it doesn't give you a picture in your mind about what this is going to be at the end of the day or what it could be. And so this idea of creating a more visual small area plan allows us to, to talk to you in a very direct way where using design as a common language. So you can tell us, you know, is, is this, uh, is this progressing in a way that makes sense and feels right for the West End. So we want to look at all of these uh, different categories and understand what's in them. But first, we wanted to back up a little bit and understand what are the, uh, you know, what are the, the, the real emotional connections and historic connections to these places and how they're emerging and get your uh, sense of uh, how it's going there. So we know what to fiddle with and what not to fiddle with. So when you look at these categories, the bright red and it sort of outside of the boundaries that we're studying, it's a little bit less red. That's the downtown zoning. It's a mixed use, right? There are um, really no height limitations there. Every every individual project comes under scrutiny for that when it when it comes in for review. Um, the green, the dark green that you see, a little uh, patch in the middle and some on the edges is uh, called an RM2 zone. It's a single family and multifamily uh, kind of zoning. It allows um, apartments, it allows townhouses, single family detached, attached housing. So it's it's also a mix, but it's more specific within a residential realm. The other ones, all of the other categories allow multiple kinds of commercial uses, like the orange that's running along Academy that you see uh, here in the in the north. Those are all local commercial uh, zoning indications. So it means that that property adjacent to um, a high volume, fast moving traffic street is become is is the sense of it is that it's going to become more local commercial uses. And in fact, there are a, a number of commercial uses there. But you know, these were once residential neighborhoods, and Academy as it exists today is in a relative sense, a relatively new piece of infrastructure in the city, and it's it's handling many different functions. The same for uh, Pendleton. Pendleton used to be a residential street, largely, and then over time it it evolved as more of an eclectic, uh, almost I'd call it a highway commercial. It's, it was a sort of secondary commercial street, very suburban in its character, you know, parking buildings surrounded by parking. And, you know, as the city has been urbanizing and we've been more focused on creating great walkable neighborhoods, um, you know, the uh, the question there is what what is Pendleton becoming? And as such a major spine here in the neighborhood, how should it feel? It's just starting to redevelop. So we, you know, in looking at patterns, one of the really interesting things for us always is to sort of look at the street patterns that you have now that you inherit. And this is just a little diagram that shows those state highway where the state has control. And there, these streets are in a lar in large part back in the day were designed to move traffic as expediently as possible uh, to circulate in and around the city. So Academy is one of those big ones. It was um, always seen as a kind of bypass, if you will. Um, oddly enough, it's becoming much more of the center of things and not so much an edge trying to get around the downtown. And then Pendleton uh, is also under state um, uh, control, and that is less trafficked, certainly than Academy, and we think has, like Augusta, same way, has more potential for, in a way, becoming a much better urban street. You've already urbanized um, a, a good portion of Augusta Street, really from starting kind of from Pendleton and Vardry uh, going north and west as it hits South Main. So we know that that kind of character is is wildly different you know than um, than many of those streets as they leave the city and so it, we like to look at what's happening along those edges and how do you make these great streets to live on to uh, uh, to walk on to have a business on 
the through streets, I, I thought it was interesting, the kind of north south connections where you can get across the big kids uh, at a stoplight They're they're highlighted with the green circle. And it was it was interesting for me um, to look at this and realize actually how many connections you have in this area that has a really I, this is a technical word funky street pattern. You know, it's it's a sort of colliding series of grids that uh, over time kind of morphed into one another. And it's you can see it's not very consistent. Uh, we have streets that were that dead end streets that were cut off uh, a little bit, but a lot of the, a lot of these north south streets go through and provide actually from inside the district. Uh, pretty good connection to the uh, collectors and the arterials, the reds and the and the yellows. And then you've got uh, streets that sort of change character uh, through there. South Main Street uh, being uh, one of the most uh, most predominant ones that really is doing dual roles. It's really acting in the city largely as a local main street, commercial street, highly walkable, small scale buildings largely and uh, a street that that sort of is an anchor for the West End as it moves from Main Street to Pendleton. So we, we, we like to look at these that connect to the outside because we know it goes both ways. It's the way you're getting into a district because you know you can get through there or you can get to a light and they typically have um, a different a, a different kind of life to them than the smaller uh, smaller local streets in between. The other patterns that interest us a lot, um, and it gives you, starts to give you a sense of what's happening, is we like to isolate just the building footprints. So you can kind of see where things are, but you also graphically really start to see the, the difference in scale between different areas within the West End. So as we look on that uh, eastern side um, of this of this district, you begin to see the bigger chunks, you know, the things that were developed the hotels and the buildings that were developed along the river in the park. Um, you see a, what look like big buildings, but they're really accreted buildings glued together attached on South Main Street. And then, you know, the newer pattern of buildings between Rhett and, and South Main, big kids. You know, some of these buildings take up entire blocks. So those are, you know, that's a really different kind of pattern um, than we're used to. Now, this. I know this area, particularly on the eastern end, used to be largely um, uh, commercial and somewhat light industrial back in the day when the, the mills were still working and the railroad was uh, a heavy conduit for cargo and, and rail traffic through here. But we're getting new ones, right? The new urban buildings where um, we're getting more, a little more density within a block they they tend to be big kids as well. The counter to that is the the one on the right, which is surface parking and vacant land. And um, it's not quite equivalent, but boy, oh boy, when you look at it, you realize just how much of our urban land is still taken up by surface parking lots. So it's got this residual um, kind of partially suburban, urbanizing as we speak, but um, when we see this many surface parking lots in the middle of a downtown or close in, we, we know that that's a, you know, that's a pattern that is tough to make lovable neighborhoods where you can walk all the way around the block and, and uh, have houses or buildings that fr are fronting all of our streets. That would be the ideal. Um, uh, Greenville has relatively tiny blocks. Um, so it, it gets harder and harder and we need to think about that because sometimes we actually kill one street, if you will, with no frontage and when we when we think about the way we're parking anything, whether it's high, higher density or it's uh, sort of this level of surface parking lots. The uh, other patterns that interest us is it, a lot here were the residential patterns and a lot of these were interesting to look at the older maps before Academy came in. And when Pendleton was connected in a different way, 
where these were whole cloth neighborhoods and they made sense. You could see it. You see how even though they're different patterns, how they connected and came together. But when we when we had that era of uh, loving our highways and we're all in our cars all the time, those streets like an academy or like a church street really changed the dynamics between neighborhoods. And we saw that really clearly in the south downtown uh, where you've got church and you and you and you have Augusta coming together to make a triangle. Well, you know, that's a different reality now. So, you know, physically. So we have to think about how those frontages work and how that connectivity works. The other one, institutions and open space. Um, you don't have any parks per se, neighborhood parks per se, much in the West End. You've got access to the to the Swamp Rabbit Trail and the Great River Park, which is amazing on that west uh, on that east side. You've got the ball stadium, which is a kind of venue uh, open space in the middle and the high school, which presents actually really a pretty remarkable open space on that uh, southern edge. And then we always highlight institutions. Uh, so there's a state office building uh, that you see there, but a lot of churches um, because those are in a way uh, kind of civic spaces that neighborhoods pivot around. This fragmented residential pattern is an interesting one. All of the darker orange buildings are multifamily and uh, pretty much every one of those is new. So when we talked about the change in scale uh, and urbanization, this is, this is a fact of life. It's happening in every city everywhere. You know, for anyone to be developing uh, residential, which we all, we need, our cities have lost so much residential population over the decades, and we're just in a decade where people are coming back into cities. So it's, and we don't work without people living in cities really well. Otherwise, you're just, you know, it's a drive to location, drive in and drive out. So it's great to see it, but it's a, it's like a new reality for everyone. So, you know, how do we, how do we deal with that? How do we integrate that in the best way possible? How does it make space? Where is it appropriate for different size buildings um, and, and how can that work as we're going forward? It, all, it also ends up reloading up all the streets. Uh, and so you inevitably get uh, lots of comments about uh, parking on the, oh, you can't find a parking space. It's too busy here. There are too many people. But, in, you know, it is one of those uh, realities of inheriting um, a, a sort of new generation of urban dwellers. So we have to figure it out and really make our streets function uh, well and not be dangerous, be easy streets to walk on, pleasant streets to live near, and, um, you know, do the best we can with beginning to handle uh, the demand for parking because it's insatiable. Uh, in in every way, shape, or form. You go back to the other one with just the surface parking lots. You you can begin to see what has happened to many of our uh, cities into Greenville too, with that kind of pattern at the advent of the automobile. So when we look at the West End and we start to think about the character, we're now stand you know in the helicopter, um, kind of looking west and south there's pendleton in the red that hits academy that hits uh, 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 actually augusta street and academy in the blue and south main street in the kind of dark orange going through so those are the big arteries that run through the precinct and i want to just to sort of step through from east to west and look and see what we're what we're seeing and thinking about as development continues, we think one of the uh, most important things that happens in urban neighborhoods is to get great frontage on uh, most of your dominant streets, the, the streets that are important to you. So when we look at this sort of first section, you can see the hotels overlooking the river and you've got uh, Falls Park Drive and that has some frontage close face to face across the street, close to South Main Street and River uh, Street that comes in, turns into Richardson as it goes into the downtown that comes and connects with South Main and Augusta. 
but you you again when you look at just the current parking uh pattern you see more vacant land and parking lots than you do buildings so these will fill up we think o over time and and uh we we wanted to think about actually what this district is becoming we know the river side we actually know the south main side pretty well in a little piece of uh, Falls Park Drive. But so much of this, we think, is still left to be defined over the, the uh, coming years. So when, when we look at what has happened in Greenville, you have made this remarkable world-class uh, district with a frontage along the river and great public space. People come from all over to walk these spaces, to shop in your shops, to 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 just be part of Greenville, and it is magical. So there was a vision for this, right? This is a this is a, a space that was meant to be built as a public space, and the buildings became the kind of canvas uh, on one edge of that park, and that that really works well. And then you see in the upper right hand corner a little image of Falls Park Drive there as you're going to the park. So it has started to make a little street um, and face to face with lots of different scale buildings, the smaller commercial buildings in the foreground on the right, the much larger mixed use buildings as you get closer uh, to South Main Street. And then when you look at the bottom right hand corner, South Main Street still largely retains that sort of small commercial use uh, for, for much of that frontage there on the, on the east end. So when we look at what, um, what, you'd, what you'd want to pay attention to, it, it would be the frontages. You know, you'd love to have River Street be a front door because it's your, it's your, your sort of conduit back and forth into downtown, comes out at the great intersection of Augusta and South Main, beautiful little plaza there. and uh, that uh, that kind of integrity of South Main becomes uh, really a huge focal point. And uh, it's, it, it you know, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's sort of everything on that northern side. Academy has no frontage right now. Um, lots of surface parking there. So we think right by the church, we think over time, those, as those blocks develop, the, the, the greatest thing that can happen for the West End is that it really starts to develop a personality along River Street um, and then along Falls Park Drive as it crosses and then Academy figure out that kind of frontage there. So you kind of complete it. You know, when you walk down a street, you're always in a place where people live and work and not necessarily uh, where they're parking their cars. If we pull to the West a little bit from there, and we, we sort of focus on what's happening in and around the stadium of Markley Street. Red, Red is developing pretty fast. Augusta Street, which hasn't um, developed all that fast, but you've got now the, the Children's Theater on there. So that's become a destination and a civic destination for the city. The stadium, the whole idea of the entertainment district now that's percolating around uh, Field Street, becoming a festival street, and the new development that's just uh, south of the stadium, all of the development uh, between uh, Markley Street and the railroad tracks, that's filling up. So that's that's a place that you're making right now. And it, it's it's interesting because uh, what we do see is a kind of common um, phenomena in a lot of cities, including our own in Pittsburgh, is that the freight line tracks, which used to be the place nobody would go is suddenly the place everybody wants to be. And they are making really, really interesting places in cities. And sure enough, when you look at where all where a lot of the energy is, uh, lo and behold, it's around the railroad tracks here in the middle of, of the uh, West End. So it's it's interesting for us to look at all of these addresses in this middle part. You've got the restored commercial buildings on this end of South Main, little restaurants and shops, very much in, in character with Greenville, and you've made lots of improvements on that part of South Main. So it's, uh, uh, so it's working pretty well um, with, 
with that kind of commercial frontage. And both the upper one and the, the one just underneath it on the left, where you're getting these wonderfully scaled little public spaces, the little leftover triangles there as Augusta and, and South Main meet, there's there are some beautiful sort of uh, people spots, if you will, and ways to come in and out of the park and up into the into the neighborhood. On the right hand side on Augusta Street, uh, great things are happening. Interesting things are happening there too. There, you see the shot of the gather that uh, hasn't been open all that long, uh, but will become, I'm sure, as as uh, we leave the pandemic, a great sort of social space uh, for folks. And it's it's really interesting to see it in context there. When you look at the photograph just below it, there's not a lot around it, right? So it's a sort of standing there alone on that side of the street near the Greenville Transit uh, 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 sites and, and Triangle. And we know that in the future, that will be a, a focus area for redevelopment too. Red Street is, is probably the most rambunctious street because you've got lots of things happening uh, that, that snuggle up to Red Street and are making frontage continuously um, into the into the western part of the district as you get down to the river and sort of joins up there with um, uh, River Street and the and and the hotel and, and entertainment district that's there. So this is fun because it is it's mixing lots of different building types and has this sort of uh, character of some historic buildings that you see the new infill. Um, that you see going up in the green uh, there and then new uh, larger scale residential buildings uh, as well. I think the heart uh, for me when you're in the West End is this sort of lovely uh, restoration and reuse, adaptive reuse of some of the old warehouses and just the utility utilitarian buildings that were clustered around the railroad tracks. So the things like the the you know the cigar warehouse and the cotton the old cotton warehouse, those sorts of buildings as they take on a new life, begin to anchor a kind of place in time, but a sort of character for Greenville um, that that uh, remains with that with that district, and you you see it being in a way being extended with newer development like the Markley Station and. Uh, uh, that that bit of development in the middle there really are taking taking cues from that era and that building type. I think even the 408 uh, new residential mixed use building on Field Street is hearkening into that kind of idea about warehouses and lofts and that sort of utilitarian, uh, a little bit more utilitarian uh, architecture. It has a character that's distinctly different in a way than than other areas within downtown. And as you continue west on South Main, right by the stadium with the field, uh, the field house, and then the new green apartments that are a little bit further down the street, it changes, right? So this end of South Main is becoming something really different than the eastern end of South Main. So, you know, when you look at the new building types there, you know, they they have a bit of a different flavor to them. So thinking about that, I think is pretty important. And when you look at the frontages that we think are in play here over time, you know, some of them are uh, like on, on Markley Street, there's almost continuous ribbon of parking right on the west side uh, of that street fronting Markley. And then as you come uh, into the district from downtown on South Main, where the Greenville Transit site is, there's a lot of frontage and we would consider the railroad tracks a frontage uh, for sure. So there are bits and pieces, uh, but there it's pretty substantial when you think about um, uh, what's what, what what's yet to happen here. Just think about that. And then as we get to the West End, it, it, this blend is is really interesting. You've got the Perry Avenue and the single family residential neighborhoods that were sort of captured between Perry and Academy. Um, Academy that used to where it used to go through and connect 
that's really become a very hard edge. Um, so it it's a boundary edge. And then Pendleton in the red at the right hand side of the screen screen to me is the wild card because it's like it's got everything and it's it's starting to change. So what is that and how does it glue these residential neighborhoods together and the commercial districts together? So when you look at those patterns, very different than what we were seeing before, you've got new investment happening. Uh, that fits into that single family pattern that was there. Um, some on Perry, others on uh, the secondary streets, and you can see the new townhouses in the upper right. That's the infill um, that's permitted there. So it's getting a little more, more, more different kinds of building types, more townhouse or attached uh, like buildings that are fitting in between. And all of the, the streets like McCall and Ware Street and Calhoun, uh, Gray Street uh, uh, as well, are, at, you know, they're inherited by smaller cottages and bungalows. They're becoming um, places where people are also infilling and trying to fill out these neighborhood patterns. And they exist as very different, in a way, very different character than what's happening on Rhett Street. Uh, further east. So, how do we think about this? You know, how is this working? And when these things come together, when you start hitting edges of different uh, kinds of building types and uses, then you know we've got to resolve those. Pendleton is interesting. It's it, you can start it start to see, you know, as these properties, these highway commercial properties, start to redevelop. Um, on the left hand side is, um, you know, for that. For that developer, that site, that building, they're taking a stab at what a relationship wants to be with Pendleton. But we don't really have an idea about Pendleton yet. You know, what can can Pendleton become a much better urban street and and do many different things or different things than it's doing now, and be a great street to uh, live on or work on um, or walk or bike. So we don't get a chance very much on streets like this, but from Vardry, um, you know, where Vardry hits Augusta all the way out to Academy, uh, we think there's a palette here that we would want to think about and how best to, to think about redevelopment. Academy Street at this end, um, it's getting filled in. And you see Trailside on the on the lower right hand corner. Um, as we look at it, it's it for us still, it's kind of an unresolved relationship. Um, and so we, I think we want to think about that, how people live on Academy, because now a lot of people are starting to live on Academy all up and down. And then you've got the great resources like the Croc Center and, of course, Unity Park now across Academy. So that's something for us to think about, like, how am I getting a stroller across there? How am I biking across? How am I walking across? How am I driving across? So when we look at this end, it feels to us like Pendleton is the is sort of the focus of thinking about frontages and then the leftover frontages or the pieces of infill here and there along Perry Avenue. Uh, there's a big uh, an existing state building that's surrounded by parking lots there. Um, if that were to redevelop, you know, what would the guidance be from the from the small area plan and the zoning for how that fills in? And then uh, the 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 sort of edges of Academy when you turn a corner there, or when when you're on Calhoun or you're on Ware Street or on any of these streets that are running perpendicular, you know, how do you make that work in a way that 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 feels like it's uh, pretty natural and organic. So that's our kind of look, you know, just as in documentation of the uh, the physical fabric that we see. Our our uh, approach is to begin thinking about it, as I said, as not one big thing, but a series of small things that connect together in different ways. So if we can establish a series of character areas, little precincts then you would go back in and revisit 
all the kind of underlying assumptions about how buildings, front streets, their setbacks, relationships within the blocks, how you turn those corners, and then think about the building frontage and the building criteria, building types that are appropriate within each of those to take another run through. So as we're tinkering with the land management and the zoning ordinances, uh, then it's got, we've got a clear vision of what, of what these places want to be. So if you'll um, uh, take a little, take a moment, we want to switch over um, to a link on this website. You see it in the blue. It's called engagetheteam.com GLB West End. If you type that in your browser and pull up that window, then this is what we'll use to have a little discussion and ask you to, uh, if you feel so moved to, is to post some ideas for us. We have an idea wall there that's uh, that we find is pretty effective. So, and um, Austin, I think it's on the chat link too, I believe. I just put it up. So everyone, if you click in the right hand corner under chat, uh, you can bring up the chat box and the link has now been provided to you. So I'll stop sharing this one for a second and I'll pull it up as well so you can see what you're what you're going to see here. Then Rob, just scroll down to share your ideas and that will click you, you click on share your ideas to get to the idea board from there. Okay, it's telling me I'm on Safari. Just you can see it, right? Yep. yep. So we a, a little bit about this um, as you click into it. Um, this will be nested on on Greenville's website. So the the images or the presentation we just went through will be there. So you can see it and as we go through, you know, this discussion and people's comments, their notes and and um, uh, questions will be posted on there and you can go back in there. It'll be live for. Um, I'm not sure how long till till the next meeting. So you can if you think of something on Saturday night. You can go back into this website and post it in there. So if you scroll down on that site there, you'll come to three things, share your ideas, next community meeting, and then there's an internet interactive map. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we wanted you to click on share your idea. And that should pull up uh, another window. And this has a series of six questions uh, and they're sort of color coded. So it, it gives you the instructions there um, on the right. You can click on each of those boxes and and leave a response to uh, each of the question. And it it when you click on the left hand side of it, it brings up an image. Some of the images we just saw and ask you the question uh, visually. So you can go through it um, that way and and take a look at some of those uh, images you click on those those will get big as well so you don't um, you don't sort of lose context so we're gonna um, go through these and you'll see your your comments will come up as a as a sort of colored sticky bar so let me go into this very first one hang on let me get rid of some of these guys so we're only looking at the first ones. So the the first one was uh, the question was as the West End continues to redevelop, what are three things you see as most important elements to incorporate in the plan to achieve a vibrant, livable downtown district in a way that reflects the qualities of Greater Downtown Greenville or the West End? So if you would uh, type in your comments in there, you can. Um, 
uh, you, you need to leave your email address at the minimum. That's that's something that's uh, uh, in, important for us to get uh, to get your comment. You sort of click the agree, and then that goes onto the board, so we we can kind of keep track of it. If you wanted to attach a photograph, you can do that too, and it'll show up. and And we always welcome um, that kind of that that kind of comment. So if we take, I think, five minutes so that we don't stay here all night for each of these questions, um, if you would just begin to post um, your comments there. And also, let's have a discussion if you've got some comments about this that you would like to make. Uh, um, Austin will be kind of a host for that and be able to uh, Unmute you or what or whatever we're doing there, Austin, to so that people can can have a conversation about this. Does that make sense? Yes, he wanted to go for a walk. Just that noise. Some people are getting to it. Some reason I can't. Let's see if he's talking comments. Yeah, you know, we're just not getting into it right now. Any takers on the first one? Rob, if we move on to the second one again, they can come back in later and provide their yep. thoughts. Yep. So if someone doesn't want to talk right now and would rather have time sure. to do it later would you just remind them of that so that they know they do have an opportunity to provide their feedback please sure thing so we'll go here's the the um the uh, the second one the second question and that is do you have in your when you think about the west end and you think about what's happening there and in areas that either by the river or you know out by pendleton by the state, other places that you think of, that you visited, that you've read about, that you've seen, that you think might provide a kind of good reference for thinking about um, a, a character district. Because you used to you used to talk about the West End as a warehouse district, and you've achieved some of that. And so, when you think about it, it's sometimes helpful to have uh, references. So we thought that that would be really interesting for us to know. Rob, I don't mean to interrupt, but we do have uh, someone who would like to ask a question. Sure. Uh, Danielle, I'm going to uh, unmute you. Danielle? Yes? If you could, uh, I saw you that you had the question mark up, if you wish to uh, ask. Well, I, I had trouble opening the site from typing it to my browser, but then when I finally clicked oh. on the link, it chat, uh, it worked. So I'm connected now. I'm, I'm, okay. a, okay. I'm a couple of pages right, behind, maybe. <laughs> but thanks, great, Austin. Great. Well, again, again, you can do this at your leisure. It, it was, I think it was just interesting if we've got comments that we start to see that we we can kind of talk about those a little bit as well. So this second one was all about, you know, references, um, either places, other places in Greenville or uh, places around the state or places around the country that you think 
could serve as a great precedent for thinking about, you know, character and scale and feel of the streets. Um, the third one is pretty specific on South Main Street. You know, as it continues to redevelop, you know, how do you think about that, that scale and character? We, we heard a lot when we were in the downtown plan about the um, uh, sense that the scale was changing so rapidly, Augusta Street and South Main Street were a couple of those streets where people wanted, always wanted to be able to relate to its earlier character and scale, rather than to be replaced by um, much larger buildings, even though you might still have shops. So that's, you know, that's been on our minds about, you know, how, how you would how to do that, what's important there uh, to maintain. And if there's something missing there that's not, not working so well right now, what is, what is it? What can we possibly provide there? And then Rob, while people are starting to think about their answers, you can also see some people have already started doing this at some of the comments that already exist on the site. There are like, you can like and dislike some of those. So if there's a comment that you're reading there that you're really interested in what someone has said, you can hit the like or dislike and that will kind of raise it and lower it so we can get an idea of what people think of some of those. The comments that are already there are comments that some other people have left as we're getting the site started and starting to talk to people all over the West End. So that is just something that you can start commenting on. And Rob, we do have another uh, hand raise. Okay. For attendees. Great. Jen, I am unmuting you now. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, uh, reinforce the the first question i think it was that i'm seeing on the website yep um that yes i live in the historic west end right now and i often walk into the village of west greenville about a mile away and that stretch is not friendly to walk at all which um, which what road are you walking on what street well i typically walk perry because it's a little bit friendlier of course, getting across Academy on Perry means either adding two blocks to my walk or playing a game of Frogger with a bunch of cars. Um, I have high risk tolerance, so I usually take the second <laughs> option. Um, but I find that Pendleton is really unpleasant to walk, not just because there's so much traffic so close to me, um, which is kind of unnerving, but also because the sidewalks are too narrow for two people to walk side by side. Mm -hmm. And the noise from the traffic, surprisingly, is a real, a real bother to me. I can't carry on a conversation on the phone well, or in person with someone next to me, and I can't listen to music or an audiobook. So I'm kind of stuck listening to this traffic and nothing else for the entire walk, which gets old for a 20-minute walk. Yep. yep. So I, sure would, I would love to see an easier transition across Academy on Perry, which already has wider sidewalks and a prettier view and a quieter walk. So it would be easier to make that the pedestrian artery and leave Pendleton as a uh, vehicle artery, which may not be the best solution. I, I don't know. It's just what I do now. Uh, Jen, would you be able to provide your address for us? Um, Yes, I'm at 111 North Calhoun Street, Unit 2D. Thank you. So yeah, you've got you've you. got two you got two things there that would be really helpful because that's a really interesting one. The the last two, um, you can kind of see it on my screen there. Or the future of Perry Avenue. That that's a perfect kind of thing, and also the future of Pendleton. Uh -huh. I would encourage us not to give Pendleton over to the truck cars. <laughs> Rob, if you refresh your screen, there's a lot of comments coming in. Uh, refresh my screen. Yes. Yeah. Um, Up in the, yep, at the, where it says like engage the team.com at the very, very top where you would type in the search bar and you have the round, Mm -hmm. You can refresh up there and you'll Oh see my god, it. look at that. <laughs> I thought you guys were all sleeping too. Jiminy Christmas. 
Okay. So no more encouragement needed. Thank you. That's exciting. So that was the future of Main Street we just talked about. The um, the other one is the future of Augusta Street, which is 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 really interesting. We had Augusta Street, so everybody gets a little piece of Augusta. The South Downtown Plan focused on both the north section that we're dealing with here and south as it is it. Um, uh, hits Church Street. So I, I think there's a lot to happen on Augusta over the next decade. So we should be we should be thinking about about that. Um, I, I think it's a really important uh, one of those really important places within the within the downtown and certainly in people's memories. And then exactly what we were talking about a little bit. One was the walkability of Perry Street, but um, there's also you know, as as we looked at those patterns, a lot of those residential patterns are fragmented, right? So trying to make a whole cloth is a really important thing for a single family neighborhood, for any neighborhood. But uh, thinking about what reinforces um, the sense of Perry and, you know, what what do you think is missing there? What's the right thing to do there? What should we be thinking about? Uh, as we go forward, that's really helpful to us. And then this thing about Pendleton, um, it does look like a street that's waiting for a vision <laughs> of itself, you know, because it's not very confident about what it's trying to be yet. And, you know, frankly, as we, uh, people have talked about it uh, a lot over uh, the past several years as being an important street because then everybody knows it's it's going to change and it is changing. So I th I think trying to reimagine it is um, important uh, because I think we can you know as we talk within the staff and you know lo looking with the traffic engineers and the the whole mobility uh, uh, opportunities here. Um, I think we can certainly influence the outcome of how that street evolves over time. You know, we have to work with the state on it, but uh, I will tell you, you, you know, your team did amazing job, I thought, on Augusta Street in converting that from what was just, a, you know, one of those old commercial highways coming into the middle of the city into uh, a street that's very pleasant on that north end. So uh, think about that. Um, a little bit as we as we move forward. Any other anybody want to discuss any of these? Be great to hear your comments. I will. Rock, go this is ahead. exciting. And how are we? Just so everybody knows, and I'm curious too. Are 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 we going to go get a chance to go through these and try to start to call them and put them in categories after our meeting tonight? This is exciting to see this many comments already. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, what you'll start to see too, Shannon, is that what the what this little website does is it aggregates also really similar comments. We do it by hand and we look at uh, how the computer is 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 also categorizing it, and we'll put them in clusters. Where there's consensus and common themes, so you can see it graphically. You can see, you know, like 80% of the people said that Pendleton was a nightmare for traffic, or you know, that needs to be a widened, much widened pedestrian path. So you can get very specific here, and if you're not limited to one comment, you know, you can put 10 comments. The more, the better. It, it really helps us. So we will uh, in the in the next time that um, we see each other. Uh, which is in May, we will go through this. So we'll we'll start reporting out on what we heard and make sure that we heard what we think we heard. Um, so that as we start to test ideas, it's plugging into where sentiment is clearly strong and try to respond to some of those concerns and opportunities. Rob, I will go ahead and unmute everyone. Uh, to see if anyone has any further comments or would like to uh, have a comment this time. All of our attendees, you are now unmuted. If you'd like to speak on any item, please just state your name and we will allow you in after that. All 
Uh, hearing. Um, well, this is Jen Allen Perry again. I have a, a question. Well, half comment, half question, I guess. Um, I am not a developer, so I don't know. I've heard that it is really difficult in Greenville to build small lodges, like duplexes and fourplexes, for example. Um, and I bring that up because I, I feel like that would be a nice intermediary, a way to accomplish infill without necessarily getting so many huge apartment buildings right next to single homes to a smoother transition. Have you found that Greenville is set up to accommodate that or that that could be a good solution for us? Yeah, I think you know. It, as a matter as a matter of fact, when you're when you're looking at infill <laughs> patterns, a lot of it is going to be the the, the, the the sites that you inherit or that you can. Uh, I'm tired. I want a piece. Sorry. Uh, anyway, the sites that you can that that you can inherit to to redevelop, it really depends on scale. Um, like so many things, you know, you're they'll be they'll be in waves like that. I think you're start to find, and you do see a little bit of it, you know, here and there when the sites are smaller, where it's uh, a twin unit or three attached together, and that that for us has been a really familiar infill um, um, uh, module. It's when you get larger sites that what we're finding particularly in a, an area where all of the land prices have gotten really high, it starts to become really difficult for that kind of investment, new investment without things getting exorbitantly expensive when you go to the lower density. So there, there are a couple of things that are governing what we see in terms of patterns of buildings. You've gotten that first wave of sort of giant uh, multifamily apartment buildings, trying to maximize density and, and cover the cost of the land and, and still uh, fit into the city. You're running out of those in the West End um, and in other places in, in downtown. And you'll start to, I think you, you'll you start to see that you're going to get a broader range of building types that are not so big. Um, it's on those big, big parcels that uh, we have, you know, the most arm wrestling with that kind of uh, scale of building. I, I do think you'll see a lot of duplexes and, and, and triples, that sort of thing. I can open it up again. Would anyone wish to speak? Please state your name and then we can uh, go in and mute again you unmute you individually. This is Andrew Rothman. Um, I'm on Meminger Street. All right. Anyone else? All right. Just a second. Andrew, you should be unmuted. Thank you. Uh, hey, Rob, uh, I was just curious what you have seen in maybe other cities and kind of developing urban areas. This is along the lines of the duplexes, but we're seeing like 0.1 acre lots uh, subdivided with duplexes on it and, and basically every new construction around us are, are townhomes. Um, and I feel like they're gradually eliminating all the single family housing in the area. I don't know if that's just a natural process we have to deal with or if there's something in this uh, planning phase that we could encourage uh, maintenance of single family homes or new construction of those. Andrew, what was your address again? Um, 112 South Meminger. Thank you. Yeah, there's there. It is a phenomenon uh, that we we see for sure, uh, particularly in in this close into downtown. I mean, you can you know you can deal with with tools to limit 
um, to limit building typologies, you know, and and coverage. And so that gets, you know, that gets to be a a, a question about, you know, it, both both the sort of neighborhood fabric that you want to preserve and keep, and and also about the um, effective use of uh, of neighborhood land, for sure. And a lot of it just becomes one of um, an economic play too, because what what we're seeing too, when when you can find single family lots in really in uh, you know high growth areas like that, becomes inordinately expensive. So you cut out a whole giant piece of the market, and that's what people are re react to that as well. So it, it's somewhere in the middle, and if it's you know sort of going too far on one side than the other, then it's time to look at the dials and and try to adjust that a bit more. Yeah, it is It is a phenomenon, you know, fortunately or unfortunately everywhere in, a, in an economy like this. Thank you. Yep. All right, I will unmute everyone again. If anyone would like to speak, speak. Uh, please say your name, and then we will mute everyone, and then I will mute you individually. Would anyone like to speak? have anyone else wishing to speak okay well um i want to thank everybody for taking time this is really i'm reading through these <laughs> a lot of the the comments that, that are on here these are really helpful it's really interesting uh for us and i think we'll you know i appreciate you you taking the time to do this too and please encourage friends and folks who couldn't attend the meeting those you know um Again, these questions will be there for folks and it'll be. Uh, you'll be able to continue making these comments. I would like to. See if I can mention 1 thing here, but we talked about it. Um, a little bit earlier. Let's see if I can get back up to the top of this website here. Uh, Rob, if you go to the about tab at the top and click back to home page. There, thank you, Ashley. Um, the other one here is an interactive map, and we always find this helpful as well. So this is about, you know, where there are strengths that you want to make sure things get preserved, and you know, sort of going back to the comment about single-family houses. You know, if that's that's a great strength, and you want to see that. Uh, is something that that uh, is important to to keep intact within the neighborhood. That can be a strength. So if you and there's weaknesses, what's missing, what you don't like, or what or the what things aren't working so well, like the walk along um, Pendleton and, and opportunities where you see areas for development opportunities. So you can go to each one of these and click on it. Uh, and drag it into um, an an area within the in the map, and make a comment on that. So that'll leave a a comment for each one of those. So if if you if that's a great tool for you, if you got some things to to talk about just in those more general parameters, please take advantage of this map, and we'll begin to collect and collate. Um, those comments as well. It's all, it's really helpful for us to um, to be able to see that. So, um, Austin, I think you know we I think we've done what we getting what we need to get. It, it's very appreciative. Thanks to everybody for attending, and uh, Austin and city staff. Thank you so much for uh, hosting this this episode. We will be 
uh, back in touch. You'll see all of the results from this posted on the on the website, so you can get into it anytime. And then uh, as we get towards April 27th, I believe is our um, next scheduled uh, public engagement. We'll be looking at we'll start starting to look in three dimensions about testing ideas here for what seems to be emerging, what's making sense, what you like, what you don't like, and uh, get more feedback on the direction of that. And then we'll tinker with that, you know, depending on your comments and how people feel about um, what are the possibilities for the future there and begin to sort of winnow down a little bit into a preferred uh, small area plan that will come back and present a draft uh, of that in late May, I think that's May 25th, and we'll do that. And then in July, you know, we'll uh, again present at a public meeting to the planning commission. So um, please stick with us, bring friends. We're we're happy to have uh, more the merrier here because it's your neighborhood, your your city, and uh, we want to make sure that we're in sync with. Uh, how Greenville's evolving. So thank you all very much, Austin. I think that's it from us. Great, and just for everyone out there to know, uh, we will be posting this video on, I believe UDA will be posting on the engaged team so that you can see it from here, as well as the city posting it on our website for the West End Small Area Plan uh, page as well. So if you have, any, if you know of anyone who was not able to attend tonight, uh, they should be able to view it uh, within the next day or two. Great. And just, just thank to, you, Austin, and thank you, Rob. Uh, sorry, Rob. Go ahead. I just wanted to shout out to to uh, Ashley Walton and Lily Zing who really put all this together. Um, I'm just the Vanna White of. Uh, <laughs> UDA, but it's, um, you know, it's interesting in these times, you know, our preference is to be sitting in a room with you guys and gals talking about this, but hopefully this is, uh, has a, been an effective way to kind of get feedback and be able to listen uh, to everybody's thoughts and comments. Thank you so much. Well, we love working with your team um, and we always like seeing them, even though it's virtual this time and not in person. <laughs> but um, we, we, we are really excited about the engagement tool and we hope every everyone takes full advantage of that because that's exciting for us, especially during this time right now where we're having to do so many things virtually. So um, thank you for everything you're doing to try to make this as inclusive as possible for everyone to be able to have a chance to participate. As Austin said, this will be out um, on our website and UDAs for review. Um, here, I think sometime tomorrow we should have it posted. So yep. check back and we'll make sure it's updated by close of business tomorrow to keep everybody moving forward. And I do think that our next public meeting is scheduled tentatively for April the 27th, same time. So we hope everyone is able to come back and join us then. But just wanted to go ahead and, and let, let everyone know that our, that's our next scheduled date. So with that, Rob, thank you again to you and your team for being here tonight. Thank you to our planning team for all of their work to help us get here to, to be able to present this to the community. And thank you to everyone who participated tonight. Your comments um, are welcome and we encourage you to share as much as you want with us over the, over the coming days concerning this project. And with that, we'll say good night and we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much. See you. Thanks so much.